What's going on everybody? Michael Silva here. Today's date, January 11, 2021. We are doing a stock market brief. I do these shows Monday through Friday. That's five days a week. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Fangman stocks on the weekly time frame, and I'm going to include Tesla to that. We're going to go over a couple stock market indicators, the indices very quickly, and then we're going to talk about commodities, dollar, yields, and bonds, and then wrap it up with the conclusion at the end. Got a lot to talk about, but I'm going to try to keep this video short. Let's go ahead and get into it. Welcome back. We're going to first look at the NIMO. There's only two indicators I'm going to go over today because really there's not much going on in the stock market today. We had a big gap down and we kind of just ramped back. Okay, so not much information to go over. Uh, the NIMO, I called out this negative divergence. It looked very similar to here in early 2020. Look, at we came with a pretty negative breadth today. Nothing like a crazy spike like we saw over here, but minus 10.41 negative breath. Got to call that out. The market did gap down and we kind of, you know, recovered a little bit, but still finished a little slightly down on the day. Now on the sentiment indicators, this is the, the bull survey. I just want to call out here, you know, the, the ratio upticked and then also the bull survey upticked as well. Still uh, technically a negative divergence here. But just know that these are extreme levels of sentiment. So when things are very extreme, you can likely take contrarian approaches to things saying, okay, if everyone's all bullish, chances are you should be looking at bearish case scenarios. But the market has been continuing to ramp up since November when these surveys really hit that high peak there. Um, on the weekly time frames, we've been noticing a lot of these weekly candles um, forming hangmans. And I call that on the last market brief video. So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll touch more on that as the week continues. Let's quickly go over the daily, uh, the daily candles. So this is the daily time frame. I'm just keeping an eye on this blue trend. It's continuing to ping right here and hold that as support. And, you know, we had a little bit of a down day today, but we still are above the five EMA and, that to me still remains bullish. And the 20 period moving average, which is in the middle of these Bollinger Bands, every time that it gets held over there, it comes down maybe sometimes a little bit more, but that holds its support too. Price percent oscillator, that is still um, bullish. We had a bullish crossover. So everything looks good so far from a bullish perspective. Keep an eye on this blue trend line, however, because if we break down from that, maybe then we might see a little bit of a downwards momentum. So right now it's been a, you know, buy the little dip, runs up, buy the dip, by the dip and so forth. So that might hold true continuingly. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, here's the same thing, holding a nice little drift trend upwards. We kind of broke out of this tightly contracted Bollinger Band, and now we're seeing a little subtle like slowdown right here. So notice, take note of the candle being a little bit smaller of a range as the time progresses forward. So we had a hanging man candle, an inverted candle, and now even a smaller range. So you can look at this both two couple ways. One, you can call this consolidation, but basically what a smaller range means is momentum is slowing from this move up. So we saw big range candles, boom, boom, boom. And now we're seeing smaller range. So it's telling us, like I just said, momentum is slowing down. And that doesn't mean that's bearish. Um, what it means is it's probably taking a breath before it continues its move or it's slightly rolling over. And if it is rolling over, you wanna look at the 20 period moving average and this blue trend line for a potential pullback and then continuation or a potential flag pattern and then a break above this all time high. The tap is like right around 31,250 could continue the push upwards. The price percent oscillator also bullish crossover. IWM, IWM has been the one that's been on a relentless tear. A little bit of a negative divergence, hanging man candle. Also take note that we gapped down by the 5 EMA and instantly just ramped right back up. So the 5 EMA has been this just algorithmic level of support. So as soon as things tap there, it gets bought up fairly quickly um, and it doesn't hang much time below there. So keep an eye on that. And then also the 20 period moving average as well as a level of support. If the price does have this, you know, wicked little drawdown right here, which wouldn't be that wicked, but, uh, you know, from the high where it's at today or the close was at 207.54. I would start looking at 200 to just 200 to 197 as a level of support to get bought back into. And then you obviously want to make sure you have a stop loss. If it goes even more past that, this one uh, range right here, which is uh, 191. All right, and the NASDAQ, 
uh, rising wedge type pattern this area of resistance is holding you can see today and we're going to get into the fangman socks this is why it's important uh we close right on the 5 ema go figure okay that's just been the technical level that you know we've been just watching very closely and it, sometimes when we get posted below it it doesn't hold much long below that level maybe a day or so you can see right here and then right here too as well and we instantly got bid right back up then the 20 period is here. So this little level of, is acting as support. So watch the trend line. If we start pulling into it, you can set yourself up for a good risk versus reward trade where you have a stop loss below it. Price percent oscillator is not looking that healthy comparatively to this drift higher. So we're drifting higher, but you can see the PPO is a negative divergence. So something to take note of um, going into the Fangman analysis. And then the last one I want to show is the NYSE. It looks very similar here to the IWM hanging man candle with two green candles on the side of it. Price percent oscillator, or sorry, this is not the price percent oscillator. This is the MACD. I forgot to switch it over. Bullish crossover, a little bit overbought. Look at, this could be a period of consolidation. Keep an eye on the 20 period and then keep a, keep an eye on the 5 EMA. Notice how we gapped down to the 5 EMA and instantly got bid right back up. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a, a relative rotation graph. This shows us what sector is performing relative to the SPY. Is it improving? Is it leading? Is it weakening? Is it lagging? And what I want to just point out here, you can see, you know, materials is leading and we call that out last week right around here. And the reason why it is because you can see it going into leading and we saw materials really take off. And then you see energy also doing really well coming into this leading. Now this is a 14 day tail. So you see the head here and then you see the tail. So you get to see where it's moving from. But I want to call your attention to um, XLK. So XLK, you can see the tail from here was leading, pushing, pushing, and leading. But now we're starting to see it weakening and then head into lagging. And the technology sector is an important sector. It is a big sector and we've been watching it very closely. And it's, there's been a lot of hype. A lot of retail traders talk about the big tech stocks, which we'll be getting into, Fangman stocks. So if we look at the relative strength of XLK to SPY, you can see here back, dating back to 2019, early 2019, very, very strong run considerably relative to the SPY performance. And now we are starting to see it kind of roll itself over as of right now. Right now, you can call this a descending pattern. So if we start breaking below this, as far as relative strength goes, it could get continuously weaker. But right now, it's really just consolidating sideways. And you can see here, a little bit of a negative divergence on the XLK itself. So let's go ahead now and hop into the Fangman stocks. We're gonna look at them on a weekly time frame, and it's important to do so because we're seeing some, some changes take place. So first off, Facebook, this was a symmetrical triangle, and the price percent oscillator, that's pretty bearish, sloping down, Not st it's still above zero, but that's a pretty bearish sign right here. You can see the momentum picking up, and by momentum, I mean the spread between these two lines and they're heading down. So you can see the histogram right here as well. And then you see the breakdown today on Facebook out of the symmetrical triangle. Once support is broken, it then becomes resistance. So you got to ask yourself, is this a, you know, a bear trap? Are people going to start shorting this? And all of a sudden we're going to see an uptick right back. I'm not too sure, but as it states right here, it's, it's looking pretty weak so far. All right. Um, Amazon, also in a symmetrical triangle, and it's pretty much peaking its head down right now. You look at the price percent oscillator as well, bearish, okay, just a very bearish tone to it, good spread, histograms kind of just flat here, maybe a little bit of an uptick this last couple of days of trading, and then the resistance is holding. So once again, are we breaking down or is this gonna be just some sort of fake out and then eventually we're gonna just turn this into a, you know, a flag pattern versus a symmetrical triangle. So basically, if it is a flag pattern, you'll see it come down probably to around 2,900 to 3,000. And then we, and if it bounces from that area, we're going to redraw this out as a channel. And then you can consider this as a flag. So it's not fully dead yet, but it is breaking down as of right now through this little symmetrical triangle. Na uh, Netflix, bull flag, and you can see it hit the top end of the range here. And you know, not the greatest start to the week so far, down 2.2%, price percent oscillator also picking up speed, and it's been aiming down as well. So if this signal starts spreading out and continuing to move down, it's not the greatest for Netflix. You'd wanna be looking around this 450 to 460 as a target for Netflix. Google 
has also been just trending sideways. We have resistance up here at around 1825 to 1850. And then on the lower end range, we have 1700. So it's been ping ponging around this channel. We had a little gap down this week and more continuation to the downside. We're down 2.24%. Price percent oscillator is flipping bearish. We have, this is a bearish crossover. So what we're gonna see here is this spread going to continue and we're gonna head lower pushing the price of Google down lower. And is we gotta ask ourselves, is 1700 gonna hold or is it gonna break down to the downside? Either way you look at this, you might be able to set yourself up for a bullish trade. Um, if you come down here and you set up for a long position right above 1700 and you have a stop loss below that, that would make sense to me because it would be a good risk first reward trade. You'd be risking a little bit to potentially hit the top end of that specific range, but make sure you have a stop loss. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean for sure it's gonna come down, but you know, as it's, as it's looking right now, you know, maybe it comes down more this week. Maybe it bounces back. It's too hard to say, but it's not the greatest start to the week. Um, it's still within a consolidation channel. Microsoft. Okay, now we're, that was the FANG stocks. Now we're moving into the MAN stocks, and then we're going to touch up on Tesla. Symmetrical triangle still holding. Red resistance, green support. Not the greatest start to the week. You know, a little bit of a gap down, a little push lower. Bearish on the price percent oscillator. So keep an eye to see a breakdown. And just like... Um, I forget which one it was, Amazon, I think it was. If it breaks down through this and we use this as support around 200, this can just be redrawn out as a flag or a period of consolidation. So that's something to also take note of. Apple, ascending triangle, bullish context, price percent oscillator is actually turning down right now. So it's still bearish. It's been bearish crossover since sep mid-September and Right now, what we got going on is just, you know, down 2.32%. If we come down lower, start looking at this level for an area of support. And keep in mind too, if we start breaking down from that, that could be a consolidation channel here as well. So we're gonna have to redraw it out if it does continue to break down through this. And then we can continue to see if there's any other trades available. This was a nice looking hammer candle at first, but then this little gap down, not the greatest start, like I said, to the week. So we'll see how it continues throughout the rest of the week. NVIDIA, the semis have been doing quite well. AMD specifically also had a good day today and a good breakout, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about NVIDIA here. NVIDIA, green support is holding. Started the week on a positive note. Has a little bit of an upper wick though. So it's kind of a, you know, right now it's a little bit of a inverted hammer candle, but the week's not over. You see the histogram kind of curling itself over, but it's still in bearish context, so that can change. Ascending triangle pattern, start looking for a break above this 580, uh, the previous all-time high right around here on good volume. That could send us, you know, a lot higher for NVIDIA. Now I added Tesla because Tesla is a hot stock that everyone is talking about and has just been on this relentless run. And, you know, we broke out of this uh, just Previous resistance here, went on a higher run. Symmetrical triangle, I called that on one of the briefs um, or a weekly scan, I forget, but we broke out of that and we've just been on this huge move higher. Not the greatest start of the week, down 7.82%. Price percent oscillator is still bullish, heading down just slightly. So you wanna keep an eye on this. Honestly, right now it's still in bullish context, but because of this relentless run high, up, 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 you know, nonstop, you're going to see more volatile days like this, you know, 68 points down on the day. This is going to be normal stuff, especially if you see weeks that you get, you know, just these huge run-ups. So, I mean, gravity is real, folks. You know, to take the stairs up and the elevator down, like, look at this. So each candle represents a week. All of these weeks to come up here, and it took one, two, three, four weeks to wipe out, you know, eight plus weeks. Well, let's actually count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah. So 10 weeks and four weeks, it was wiped out. So that type of price action, you know, happens, especially when you get, you know, high flyers like this. So if we do start continuing down, you might want to look at around 500, maybe even 600 for an area of support, but just be careful. Make sure you have a stop loss. This is a fast mover. Overall though, like I said, the dips have been getting bought. So Things are still bullish in this current context. All right, everybody, let's go into commodities really quick. Then we're gonna talk about dollars, yields, and the bonds, and then wrap it up. Gold, a little bit of an update today, right? We gapped up, but then we headed lower, hit this little target zone just on the top of it. I didn't end up buying any gold here. I wanna pick up a little bit more, a little bit lower. I'm keeping a close eye on the 10-year yield, which we'll get into. 
but still right now, not the greatest look for gold. This could be a potential dead cap bounce, or maybe this is just a short-term little hiccup. You know, bull um, markets climb walls of worry, and you know, walls of worry, you know, the bull is going to try to kick you off over and over again, and these could be kicking off people for that potentially might be long-term investors. Um, I, on the other hand, am not a guy that's going to be jumping off this bull. I plan on holding it clear down to 1350 and I would be buying more at that specific level. So I already built a core position and I'm just continuing to add on it on huge days. The downside, silver. Also, hammer candle that formed. Not too bad. Up day, red body. Maybe this is a temporary thing. We're above, back above the 50 period moving average. Maybe we bounce from here. But keep in mind, we did have the bearish crossover on the price percent oscillator. This could just be a very well dead cat bounce. Going to have to keep a close eye on it. Uh, Bitcoin's been all over the news. I just wanted to call out just we've been saying that you're going to see very volatile swings. That doesn't mean that it's going to be crashing right out of the gate or not. But you need to be very careful at these specific levels. We hit 42,000 and then in you know two days, we went as low as a 27% drop. Now that quickly got bid back up right around $30,000, but we're still down, you know, 10% from the all-time high. So if you put in a lot of money on this, you need to make sure that you're managing your risk because the levels can get knocked out very, very quickly and aggressively. MACD crossing over slightly here. We'll see what takes place as time continues. Start looking at the 50 period moving average. Uh, as a potential another area of support, that's right around 24,000. That was where this area of consolidation was. That could make sense to me. If we start cracking below those levels, it'd be 20,000. And then we'd start looking at the 200 period. But we'll see because everything's in a bullish trend right now. We have the 50 sloping up, the 200 sloping up. So you're going to get pullbacks, you know, bull markets, you have pullbacks within it. So you, ju you just got to be able to withstand this stuff or trade around it. Let's look at the dollar. This one is interesting to me. So the dollar, and this could be correlated with Bitcoin here too. You, you know, we're starting to see a big push up in the dollar and yet you're starting to see Bitcoin roll over a little bit. So be careful if you're watching the dollar and we see continuation moves to the upside, that can put pressure on not only gold and silver, but I mean, look at Bitcoin. And if we even get stronger moves to the upside, that can put pressure on equities. So bullish crossover, we had the bullish divergence, bullish divergence here. And, you know, we broke out of this, wedge and then we started drifting down now we got above the 20 period moving average and our next target is the 50 period so this could be very short term but still it's putting pressure on the markets as we can already see and you know this because look at here in november well what was happening in the stock market from november while the dollar was just tanking down well the stock market and equities really enjoyed a huge run up since November as the dollar kept on getting obliterated. So if you start seeing the dollar continue to find strength here, well, it's safe to say, and the probable outcome is that equities are going to struggle to continue to move higher. Not to mention on the weekly time frame, it's looking pretty bullish here too. Falling wedge, positive divergence, positive divergence there as well. Yields and bonds, let's get into that. Uh, first off, this is the, you know, we're zooming out a little bit. I talked about this chart, this huge squeeze to the upside when we talked about the taper tantrum. Uh, that was with the 10-year and then the 30-year. And now we're starting to see the 10-year steep in here as well. This is pretty aggressive move to the upside and then the 30-year too. I am actually have a video coming out. It was my first sponsored video, but um, it was pretty cool because I got to build my own content and then, you know, just mention them as the sponsor, which is really rad. But I built out, you know, a case for how to prepare for the next move in gold and silver and including miners. So I'm excited to launch that. That should be coming out here very soon, as soon as I get approval um, for the video. So and then we have the 10-year spread also up 1.01. 1 .01, and that is the highest it's been um, dating back to July of 2017. So the spread is steepening and that makes sense because short-term rates are pinned and you see the 10 and 30 year are sharply increasing. That's the, the feds are, the fed is going to keep an eye on this. Okay. This big move right here. That's, that's not a small move. That's a 24% move on the 10 year in four day, four days, four trading days. So in 2021, we're seeing a very, very sharp increase. Where can this potentially go? Well, it's hard to say, but start keeping an eye right around 1.2. Uh, you know, there's been, like in the video that I'll mention is they had 53 analysts say by the end of 2021, 
they expect rates to be at like 1.15 or 1.2. And then in the first four days, we're there. So, uh, you know, yes, pay attention to what's going on here. And not to mention, you can see as yields are spiking up, it affects the precious metals as well. Uh, this is zoomed out even further, right? We broke out of this channel. We're dating back to the 80s here, even further, actually, the 60s. So this was support all the way through, lower highs, lower lows. We broke down aggressively, and now we're coming back to test this. We look like we're actually in back within the channel. So this could be temporary or maybe not. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe we get back in there and we just start drifting sideways. It's going to be hard to say, so we'll keep an eye on it. The MACD, if you look at that, that's bullish crossover right here. And now we're kind of moving ourselves back into that territory. So keep an eye on the 10-year. Uh, on the bond side of things, this is the 10 to 20 year we're looking at the TLH. We're oversold, okay? And last time we were oversold, well, not really oversold, but the last time we got out of this channel was right here and it didn't last much longer and then we shot right back up. So this could mean to me that this is a short-term little move and it's just a little bit of a, you know, temporary, you know, spike in yields and temporary fall in bonds. Overall though, bonds have been drifting lower, right? Lower highs, lower lows, and now we're starting to see some more aggressive moves to the downside in bonds and more aggressive moves to the upside in yields. All right, everybody, so just to wrap it all up, a couple things that are on my mind. My, my mind and my eyes are on these Fangman stocks. They make up for a big portion of the market cap in various indices. So when you see stocks like this struggle to continue to push markets forward, or if you start seeing them aggressively sell off, that can apply pressure on the markets. And when you see the dollar starting to break out of these key levels, this could be temporary, but we need to be aware of what's taking place because equities enjoyed it while the dollar was falling tremendously. But are they going to enjoy it if the dollar is rising? It's tough to say. It's tough to say, folks. But that's all I have for you on today's Market Brief. Hope everyone has a wonderful day, and I will talk to you all later.